愛する人たくましい自分になれるさ Now I welcome you again to my personal judgment about the first figure of the series Joshinga, Tamashi series, Agumon, or Kremon, respectively, Digivolving Spirit series, Agumon, or Kremon. And first of it all, Happy New Year to all of you! I know that I am very late with the review video about this first figure and of course with all the following upcoming review videos about the other figures of the series because between my update video about the, his promotion and his official release to this personal review video about him now has passed a very very long time. I would also like to apologize for that. However, I've had my hands full with creating and uploading the videos of my re-upload video series part 3 and I also had to create the other information update videos from time to time. Out of this I had to make videos about some of the newer figures, etc. After that firstly, and I did not want to mess up everything, but do it step by step. And besides, I wanted to review you the figures of the Choshin Gatamashi series or Digivolving Spirit series all together as possible. Out of this, the release of the still missing figures has been paused from the part of Bandai Tamashi itself without any notice for the whole year 2019. That's why I decided to start now in 2020 with the reviews of the Choshin Tamashi series in 2020 as long as this whole copper YouTube problem still allowing me to do this. This only incidentally and quickly back to the actual topic. Again shortly as an explanation about the figure series name Shoshinka Tamashi series is the original Japanese de designation or title of this figure series, while Digivolving Spirit series is the designation for the title for our western market. And the two designations respectively titles are a reverence to the former names of the transformable Digimon figures line from the past for Japan, the Shoshinka series and for the western world the Digivolving series. Since Choshinga Tamashi series is the original Japanese name, I will use it here more often than ours. While judging these figures, I also will going back to official statements and my personal pre-justice assumptions and statements that I made about in my update videos, which I made to every new promotion announcement of this Choshinka Tamashi figure series. Bandai Tamashi Nations and the creators say themselves officially that with this figure series they strive to be the ultimate transformable Digimon figure series for adult collectors. Because of this official statement I will also be very strict in my judgment. Yes, and what is the most important? thing for adult collectors, right, the best possible accuracy to the original character design in terms of the overall image and the possible implementation, the proportions and paint shop, paint apps of both evolution forms because of the use of the latest molding techniques as officially described there are now no more excuses for any compromises where you still could say about the old figures yes that was due to the limited technology of back then and not possible to do it better or that these old figures were originally intended to be for children and the play fun was in the main focus and that those figures had this transforming ability and not the absolute best possible accuracy in both evolution forms. Though the most of the old figures they have already done 
very well in my opinion, despite the lower technical possibilities of back then. What I also have to mention ahead is that I have seen some videos from various international YouTubers who made short and concise reviews about the Chushin Katamashi series figures, some even without demonstrating the transformation and bought a figure because they found the figure kind of cool or something like that or they got sent it to review them in their channel and so on. Well, three English speaking reviewers I watched had no clue about Digimon at all so they could only judge the figures superficially because they have no big knowledge about or just none by even not knowing the anime show or and therefore not being able to judge the figures accurately accurate accurately in terms of how both evil forms should look like in compared to the original character design in how far Bandai Tamashi actually made it with the new figure concept to be perfect or not if Bandai Tomashis could stay true to their own official statements of their various promotion updates with the actually end product and all that stuff which is so important and interesting for the true Digimon figure enthusiasts which these YouTubers couldn't cover and judge with their own judgment this way like in contrary I can for example because those simply have not this completely necessary background knowledge for being able to judge it this way of course this all you will get from me in sufficient detail very detailed and appropriate from the point of view of a Digimon fan of the first hour and a figure enthusiast who also knows the old Digivolving figure series as I already explained it shortly in the introduction and I really will pack in here all my thoughts that come to my mind so get ready for something because that will be getting a quite longer journey again but you already should know this of my videos so let's start the first figure of the Choshinga Tamashi series, Agumon Warcraymon, was released at the end of November 2017 in Japan. Since I had discovered the Nippon Yasan shop only a short time before back then, I had already pre-ordered the figure in a German shop. However, the release date would have been much, much later by us and since I was so super hyped for this new transformable figure series, also due to creating the update videos about, I could not and did not want to wait that long time any longer and cancelled my pre-order in the German shop and ordered Agumon Warcraymon at Nippon Yasan since they also sold him for a cheaper price as the pre-order price logical was by us. And I was rewarded by my impatience and received the figure before Christmas 2017 from Nippon Yasan, which had a very positive side effect for me. Now it was finally the time and I held the long awaited first figure of this new series in my own hands and all my thoughts that I had and have from then on until now about it I will now include in this review video. First a bit about Agumon's form. You can notice that they by the most of those figures they sacrifice the look of the pre-evolution form for the better look of the higher evolution form which in my opinion was a very good decision. Though Agumon's form looks very very decent and I think it could not have been done better in my opinion. One on top I've never had and have the old Warp Digivolving Agumon Warcraymon figure and can make the comparisons between new and old just by looking at pictures and watching reviews of it. But I think that is not a problem because of my research to learn about the transformation system of the old one. The figure in Agumon's form measures about five and a quarter inches. Circa. 
Personally, I think the overall image of the Agumon form is very successful and a very big improvement can also be clearly seen in comparison to the old one. You can see on the new one barely larger slots, gaps, holes and transformation joints on the entire body which has the old Agumon form very clearly visible on many sections if you comparing them. In addition, you can hardly see War Greymon Kibble on the new Agumon, worth mentioning there are only the folded in blades of War Greymon's Dramon Killers, which was about the same way with the old Agumon and without designing them detachable, not otherwise possible to implement. So everything alright here. And secondly, the visible folded down spikes of his shoulder armor parts on Agumon's upper hind shoulder sections. The rest of Wargreymon's visible parts were really used for very good effect to be able to implement them at the same time for Agumon's shoulders and arms, well proportioned to the rest of the body. Again, thumbs up for that. As you can see on the old Agumon, the shoulder armor looks kinda twisted and strange molded and so for Wargreymon's form those parts looking somewhat stunted and by no means accurate. Especially those spikes looking very stunted, so even if you see the spikes folded down on the new Agumon shoulder sections, is that a compromise to be able to make it look better and accurate for Wargreymon's form? on the new rear than it was on the old one. And excuse me again for the many mistakes, also here for totally okay I think. And we know this war Greymon kibble was also on the old Agumon's arms and shoulders just a little differently implemented and molded, well you had those on a turnable section, but yeah. And on the old Agumon, the entire lower middle part was War Greymon's crutch front shield at the same time. So at the hind sections of Agumon's form was a big part of War Greymon kibble visible. This also applies to the fact that the lower halves of the feet are orange due to the transformation system and the possible skin color change, which could gut through this really incredibly ingeniously solved and implemented. This also includes some orange shimmering through on the elbow joint sections of War Greymon's arms, but you can even insert the arms for Agumon's form there, so that really only a little of the orange color sections of War Greymon's elbows are visible there. Again, there is no point deduction raw or even several plus points. The above mentioned compromise also includes the slightly to yellow skin color of Agumon which should actually be a little darker and more yellow orange. But since Wargreymon's skin has to be orange anyway and Agumon's parts becoming Wargreymon's armor parts and through this he is able to do this unbelievably ingeniously solved skin color change. Also this compromise with the slightly wrong coloration for Agumon's skin is absolutely understandable and thereby only clarifies the later skin color change even stronger, namely so it shows off better what sections are the true orange skin of War Greymon and what are the armor parts. And that's why I personally think that the new figure in Agumon's form actually has only positive aspects compared to the old Agumon. The overall image of the Agumon form looks very clean and closed and as I said without slots and gaps and on top of that the basic body shape got implemented very well by better proportions and sharper shaping and looks compared to the old absolutely improved. And even the paint job is nothing to sneeze at. The eyes were beautifully detailed painted 
and for the accurate representation of the retina, they even used two different green colors, which just looks great. The arms and legs of Agumon are, as you can see, also very well articulated and can hold the set pose by a very good strength of the various joints very well. He has ball hinge joints for the shoulders so that movements with the arms in almost all directions are possible. The movements inwards and outwards are of course somewhat limited by Agumon's head and body, but yeah. The elbow hinge joints are extra rotatable and bend able, the hands extra rotatable on a ball pack, but this is more intended for walk Raymond's form because the elbow joints act as such for both forms. The legs are attached to a ball hinge joint and are rotatable on the ball, so it allows movements in almost all directions and so are possible even in combination with the extra rotating knee hinge joints and ball pack joints of the feet. Of course the range of movements is somewhat limited but still very good and the interplay of all these legs joints allows a perfect fit for a natural position and standing pose for Agumon and also a few unique poses also in combination with action additional stands, but also to mention the Tamashi stands for example are almost not able to withstand the figure's high weight. Let us get into the transformation. According to the instructions, Agumon can be transformed into his impressive mega form Warcraymon in roughly 18 transformation steps. Since everything is very quite snug and tight connected, you should do it with some care, especially the first time to avoid to break off any packs or cause other damages to the parts. This counts especially for the connecting packs and slots of Agumon's whole side sections, which becoming Warcraymon's side skirt guard parts, and especially if you open them for the transformation to Warcraymon this is very very snug connected as you can see by this four molded on packs on the guards and the molded on slots of the other surrounding parts. So again be very very careful and patient when you open these side sections because this is a bit fiddly to do this and also make sure to have everything lined up properly again when you transforming Warcraymon back into Agumon. If you have experience, experience with similar figures, for those it should not be a problem to transform Agumon into Warcraymon and back. For others with little to no experience with such things, they should study the instruction and pictures very well and if necessary watch more videos that show the transformation. These people then give mostly tips on what to look for to not break off immediately something ETC. This is generally true because the figures are a bit more complex than the old ones. For me personally the transformation is no problem, I have a lot of experience with the Hasbro Takara movie Transformers figures as well as with those third party company Transformers where there are much more difficult, really complicated ones. I always go by the instructions, especially for the first few times. I would not rate the figures as easy now, nor as overly difficult and complicated. And personally, no matter how difficult and complicated the transformation is, as long as you can replicate the best possible accurate character design with the figure in both forms, that's the most important thing for me, because I think only in this way is this also only really possible. The base transformation from Agumon to Warcraymon is similar to the trans transformation system of the old figure, but that was it with the similarities. Because the new figure makes a lot of things completely different and additional. 
and those who have forged three judgments in ahead even before the figure was even released that the new one is just a remake of the old figure with slightly improved proportions or even gone this far as to say he is almost the same or even the same as the old figure and much much too expensive because of this. Those I want to prove it with this video to convince even the last critic that this is not true. Of course it is still a bit similar and the transformation technique is so, which is logical, but you should also note that there are not so many other ways to conceive and implement these Digimon monsters in a much different way. The Digimon have to do a complete body shape, size and color change, which is more difficult to implement as for example it is by the movie Transformers figures, which has only in quote marks must transform from vehicles to robots. Because you can always change something in the transformation system and always design it a bit differently to improve it in the end to create a new improved figure and then put all of that stuff under the vehicle body of that mode in combination with the new transformation system and cover and hide it all up with the vehicle parts. Accordingly, the Transformers do not have to change their complete body shape to the same extent as the Digimon have to and above all have for the most part not to do a size and color change to that extent in compared to the Digimon. I think most of you will be able to understand and follow me about what I want to say with that. When you are done with the warp Digivolution you get an impressive looking and seeming Warcraymon with the officially promised sharp edged and well proportioned body or respectively armor parts which despite being a transformable figure are very detailed and impressive molded and painted with the accurate and matching colors and color tones. Also the paint job itself is absolutely detailed and as it should be and as we are got promised on the official promotion page. But first things first. The transformation is definitely a lot of fun, but at the same time you should have some courage and not to be so shy because the transformation joints are very very tight and stiff. What I personally do not think is really bad and rather positive because it also contributes to a very solid strength of the joints in general because some transformation joints are at the same time of course the different joints of the two evil forms. Personally I think the overall image of the War Raymond form is very successful and here is also a very big improvement very clearly visible and not as able compared to the old War Raymond. By the way the figure measures as Warcraymon about 6 and a half inches. First of course, the new Warcraymon shines through this impressive possible made skin color change which was completely ignored by the old one. On the old the yellow of Agumon's form remained for the body parts which should be actually orange for Warcraymon and so also of course for the armor parts. The entire color scheme of the old War Greymon left a lot to be desired is very pale and monochrome through this almost ugly too bright yellow overall coloring and the plastic grey colored parts that have been chosen for the chest armor and the shin guards looking very unpleasant too. And in, opin and in my opinion it could have been done better even already back then if they had chosen a slightly better shade of darker yellow for Agumon that would even not have bothered at all so Warcraymon's form would not have been so pale. Yes still pretty plain but at least would had a little better color coloring. Excuse me please. This overall pale image of Warcraymon's form was actually the main reason that I never bought the old figure, even tough 
I read that for the most people it was one of the best figures back then. But I could never share this idea due to the yellow monochrome pale look because even already at this time I had put so much emphasis on accuracy in coloring and paint apps. In this point of view is the new figure, as I already mentioned several times before, really well thought out and solved, very intelligent and we actually have completely wrenched arms, fists under his armor and the Dramon killers and of course completely orange legs, at least from the front, for the visible parts and almost completely orange feet. Well yeah, the lower part or parts of the legs are yellow, but that are just the legs of Agumon's form, which anyway get covered very well by the shin guards from the front and could not be implemented in a different way. And yes, also the feet are yellow half-wise and, and on the back sections and not completely orange. Of course due to the nature of the transformation system, but otherwise Agumon would have had completely orange feet and that would have been much worse in any case. But as I said before, not different possible to implement, so for this everything okay as well. And the system with the two colored feet is just an absolute ingenious idea to be able to implement the skin color change and simply fold up the feet for the respective evil form and to turn the claws around is truly ingenious. The skin color change is definitely great to recognize, got as I said ingeniously designed and therefore the few yellow parts actually don't bother. But you can say that they has kinda skillfully hided those yellow sections a bit more in their illustrations on the official promotion page, pictures and images that are not appearing this obvious to you by the first looks. For those who say and comply, ah well the thighs and legs are much too thin and the shin guards are too small and too narrow, I say you are right, of course, no question, that's true, but was not possible to do it otherwise without swabbing any parts. And those who have already transformed the figure will have figured out that at the latest that due to the lack of space inside Agumon's body these parts could not have been larger. It is already very difficult enough to get it all in there and to get it closed the right way with that size of those parts. So there is no point deduction for this. And I also have to say that I find the thickness of his thighs and legs quite passable and that because they are a bit too thin, they do not kill the overall image of the figure to such an extent or does not negatively affect it this bad. Luckily the legs are not as able to figure in perimeter than the arms and that is very positive. It would be very bad and unacceptable if the arms would be bigger than the legs, but how it is, it is still fully okay. It was also similar on the old one and this could do less. And for the new one it was just not possible to do it much differently. And the shape of the thighs looks very natural and they have in general been very well detailed molded as it was in contrary on the old one. Also keep in mind that this figure should and was not supposed to be a figure arts Warcraymon figure, it is still a transformable figure which was and is still the main focus what it should be but even touches in figure arts figure in the design and that is what's breathtaking. And because we are almost there, let's take a look at the Agumon kibble on Warcraymon's form. In the update video about Warcraymon's Agumon's official promotion, I said kinda following that on Warcraymon's form barely Agumon kibble are not as able and that it could have been greatly reduced compared to the old figure. 
However, I have to contradict these statements from myself now a bit. From the front view, the new War Kramon looks by far better, of course, than the old one. And according to this, from the front view, my first statement from my update video that he has barely noticeable Agumon kibble is almost true. But apart from Agumon's parts becoming War Kramon's side skirt shields on the belt, most of Agumon's body parts move back to War Kramon's back and that Agumon splitted head halves becoming the wing shield like it was on the old one. Let me ignore this for the moment now, because to this topic I will coming back a bit more exactly later on. These other parts are then getting folded together as good it is possible, resulting in immense backpack which is very much sticking out backwards. If you compare that with the old figure, the old one looks very clean on his back and he actually does not have a backpack, backpack at all because through the other transformation system and the less big part on the old one. The Agumon kibble goes to other sections and compresses differently. But what you also should see because that the back is free of a backpack on the old one, the far forward sticking out crutch shield section due to the differently compressed Agumon kibble underneath it also looks absolutely ugly and if they would have done it the same way on the new one it would have spoiled the perfect front view very very badly and would have killed it totally and would have killed totally the overall image of War Kramon, in my opinion. So we have to accept Tameshi's decision that on the new one at least the front view is clean and so it is okay that the figure has a large backpack. So from this point of view both figures have their problem areas on the new there is this immense backpack and on the old one we have the front shield that is too far sticking out forwards and the two long side shields on the belt to Agumon's parts. Well the side shields on the belt are Agumon's complete side sections on the new one and therefore those are far too wide for War Kramon's side shields but have a very passable length compared to those of the old one. So, that, so let me conclude that on the whole with the kibble in, in a new way, so that the kibble has not exactly been reduced, the kibble just goes to different sections and compresses differently for a better effect of a better, more accurate front view of War Raymond's form. And now the question is, could they have done something better to make the kibble seem a little less? I think yes and definitely and in any case they could have. They still could have for example install a few joints onto Agumon side sections to achieve a more accurate look for those side shields of War Kramon to be able to fold and compress the white parts for the side shields a bit better. Then of course Agumon's side sections would not have looked so clean because of these additional visible hinge joints and little gaps etc. Well that would have been to consider but probably they wanted to achieve a relatively clean body shape for Agumon's form otherwise he would have just had more of those slits and transformation joints on those side sections. So you could see the compromise again for both forms here, but that's not so much in the weight and there are only a slight point deduc deduction for these slightly too wide side shields and not for not and for not doing it this way with the extra joints. But if you consider that the main focus maybe was to make the higher evolution form looking better anyway, that could be a point to argue about. Yeah, 
but they truly had could done something better with the backpack. With a few extra swivels on the different connection ports of the backpack, so the ports would have been even more foldable into each other due to the rotation ability to be able to compress the backpack ports a bit better. So it all would have been a bit more foldable, tough the backpack would be still there, but more compressed and not so far sticking out backwards. Installing such swivels on those connection hinge joints would have been absolutely possible in my opinion by not doing it. They have obviously wanted to save costs. As these hinge joints would not have affected Agumon's clean body shape at all because they would be anyway on the inner sections and so would be attached to the hinge connection joints anyway. So in short, every of those hinge joints for the folding ability should have a rotation joint in combination. There is no excuse for that and that could and should have been done better. With this, for the first time they do not they do not do justice to their own statement that they want to make perfect figures for critical adult collectors. For these missing swivels or respectively rotation joints, I have to give personally a significantly point deduction for the first time here. Another point in terms of negativity, which is now not quite as significant as the backpack, is that the red hoses on the shoulder armor are completely missing and not even been hinted there, like it was the same on the old one. Of course, it could not have been done logical, because do not to spoil Agumon's accurate shoulders and can be seen as a compromise again that Agumon's form is clean and accurate there. So molding the red hoses onto the shoulder armor was nothing to discuss. But I think they could ha at least have made them fold able downwards under the shoulders to hide them for Agumon's form, which are also the shoulder armor parts for Warcraymon's form at the same time. I think there is enough space under the shoulders at least to hint the red hoses on the front of the shoulder armor ports. From the back view they are covered by the wing shield anyway and since about a back view you would not fall over backwards for excitement as well. Of course the Nagumon shoulders would not have been quite so clean due to additional joints on the edge and the shoulder ports might not have been so close fitting how it is actually supposed to be, which would have been bad then for Agumon's form again. But I think there is enough space in the shoulder armor insides to put those details on a little slider to push them up as high as possible, whereas the most space. So I think this would not affect the wished close fitting for the shoulders for Agumon's form then you could have pushed the hoses or the hose details for Warcraymon's form inside the shoulder armor on the little slider a bit downwards to the edge and then make it foldable for the accurate representation onto the right position of the shoulder armor part. But I, I uh, excuse me please, but I also can be wrong with that and there is really not enough space for such a device and the additional host details inside would have affect the close fitting look for Agumon's form. I mean, Agumon's form already has the folded spikes for Warcraymon's shoulder armor obviously visible lying there. If that would have been such a good idea, you cannot judge so well. I just wanted to mention it and spitball my idea because these red hoses are missing completely on the shoulder armor. The next thing that looks a little weird are the end sections and the transition to the blades on the inner front sections of the Dramon Killers, which as you can see was even cleaner and better detailed on the old one. On the new one you have only those bigger gaps and a big hinge joint for the folding ability of the blades. 
for Agumon's form and this transition actually looks better on the old one and is more accurate to the original character design. So that really could have been made looking better and accurate molded on the new one too, just like on the old one. That would not have affected Agumon's form's look either since the folded chrome blades would have hided this extra detail on each side for the most part and the inner hand sections of Agumon's form does not look accurate anyway because of the folded in chrome blades but in contrast they would have achieved a slightly more accurate inner look for the Dramon killers for Orgramon. And even if you now say that there is very little space there because of the fist EDC, maybe, but I also think that this hinge joint bulge should not have been so extreme and clunky and they had could design it kinda more decent and a bit smaller. Those hinge joints have not to withstand such a high weight with the blades because the blades are not made of die cast but made of lightweight plastic and act only to be made out of die cast due to silver chrome blading. But maybe those big hinge joints are this big because of the transforming technique and feature because if you fold out the blades, the claws of Agumon's hands, hands which becoming the upper details of the blades snapping automatically into the right position. For Warcraymon's form, which is a very cool feature to note and therefore I give a plus point. The last two things again in terms of the theme, the figures should be perfect for adult critical collectors according to their own official statements. Well, Otherwise, the figure has been pretty perfectly implemented and designed and is nothing to sneeze at in both forms and I really really like how the first figure turned out. All other parts have an impressive accurate sharp edged shape. What I like most is the shape of the entire head or helmet which left already in positive impression even in the very first images. For a transformable figure the head looks absolutely awesome and accurately shaped and molded and looks in my opinion in terms of shape and paint better than all the heads of the previous different Tameshi figure or Sword Raymond figures out of the helmet of the transformable one here even has partially die cast parts on it what gives the whole an even more impressive aspect even Tough the figure is transformable and that really means something. On top of that the head is very very well articulated and even the neck is extra articulated. So for this it, de it deserves the full score. The just mentioned things also applying to the paint job of the entire head. The eyes have been implemented just perfectly and accurately detailed and have been detailed painted again as well as Agumon's eyes with two different green colors. The eyes look even cleaner and much better to me than the eyes of Tameshi's The Arts War Cramon, his repaint The Arts War Cramon original designer's edition and about SH Figure Arts Bukura no Wargame version War Cramon's ugly wrong blue eyes we do not need to start discussing again. Just first class by the Digivolving here. The chest plate is also made of die cast and also with different matching colors beautifully detailed painted. The crutch shield is as promised also made of die cast so I can now clear up to you that the belt itself is not die cast. As I had in initially assumed from the promotion page texts. In addition, the shin guards, the feet ball pack joints and five ball pack joints are also made of die cast. So I also named all parts of Wargramon which are made of metal where the designers also made a good choice 
due to the diecast ports the figure has also quite a, is also quite heavy and Tamashi's promised high quality finish is clearly not as able. Through the diecast ball pack joints you hardly can damage something and due to the general very good strength, strength of the entire joints he keeps all set poses very good which is really great. Yes, and the different chosen colors and color tones for the paint job of each detail are in, gen in general absolutely fitting and very accurate and better than on Tamashi's D Arts Warcraymon and of course as well on SH Figure Arts Bakura no Wargame version Warcraymon. Though he is a transformable figure, you have to keep that in mind. I like all the chosen colors to 100%. I think it is very great that the hair is matte red and the rest of the red details are painted with another very nice metallic red where even the red on the diecast ports I already, I already would have to designate as a chrome red. Also the kinda iron color for the helmet, chest plate, front shield and the shin guards is absolutely charges. The dark matte blue for neck and neck sections, belt and inner wing sections could also have been a bit more shiny dark metallic blue, especially for the inside of the wing shield, but still looks very good as it is. They probably wanted to create a few different color accents through the interplay of shiny and matte colors, because the overall image of the color scheme fits together really well and therefore there is no point deduction for this. The detailed paint apps is also reflected in the buggers and lever straps on his arms where the straps and the drummond killers brackets are black and each of the individual buggers are beautifully painted with silver in detail. Out of the respective bottom buggle is half covered by the black brackets it got the right paint app and that it and that I would like to emphasize here again if you remember and as when I think and of SH figure arts Bakura no war game version Warcraymon straps and buckles design fiasco we remember in this case the straps are not black are not individually segmented and the buggers were even completely not molded on. So awesome here on the Cho Shinka Tamashi Warcraymon. The only thing you could complain about is that the clearly visible thumb claw here again left a range and was not painted white. But that's also here to apologize again because this weakness sadly sharing all previous Tamashi Warcraymon figure arts figures. Let's get to the color design of the Drummond Killers. The upper details on top of the plates are white. Of course they should be more iron grey till darker silver, but since they are Agumon's hand claws, which of course must be white, that's the compromise they had to make, just like it is with Warcraymon's yellow armor ports, which could not be metallic golden, otherwise Agumon's from wood have had a metallic golden skin color. Yeah, it speaks for itself, logical. The Dramon Killer's blades had to be this chrome silver blading. I think is not quite fitting since they should be rather painted anthracite till black, but well, they just wanted to add another color accent that was indeed in the promotion texts highlighted too how cool these chrome blades are looking. Probably a matter of taste and it spoils the whole image not as strongly and therefore there is also no point deduction for this. In general the quality of the paint and in terms of cleanness is good. I would not now call it perfect but like it is on the figure arts Digimon figures where you can notice by a bit closer look that it is also or was 
also not so perfectly clean executed to 100% on all figure arts figures. And that applies to War Greymon's form too, because you can see on several different sections that they painted over there a bit. On my War Greymon copy, on the round detail on the left side of the neck armor, there is a slightly larger red color dot which not belongs there. And even on the right side horn you can see a larger gray color splash, but oh well. That's so far to the extent about the cleanliness of the paint shop, but in general, in general it is still good. Now we come to the to my most personal negative aspect of War Cremon's form. Why I did from the beginning on, as the critical collector had wished, that it would not go the simple way again, like on the old transformable War Cremon, so that Agumon's face, eyes and so on are not just again this clearly not as able on the back of War Cremon's wing shield. And I do not mean that the Agumon's head halves becoming War Cremon's wing shield which way is of course and logically not otherwise possible to implement differently and actually already being solved as simple as ingenious. What I mean by that is that for the adult critical collectors for those they making the figures according to their own statement not considered and given an additional option part in form of the accurate brave shield with the crest symbol of courage on it. I had wished so much for such an additional option part to be able to cover up Agumon's head shape and face with such a part for Warcremon's form somehow. Or how about an additional interchange able brave shield option part for example. But unfortunately this has been left as simple as it was with on the old figure and that is very sobering for such a collector's figure. Even though they said it officially on the first promotion livestream back then that they did it on purpose again and Kenji Watanabe even highlighted this in his illustration of War Cremon on the box front and in the illustration he even extra adapted the shape of War Cremon's wing shield more to the head shape of the actual figure. Instead of drawing the brave shield of War Cremon in accurately design and shape to the character design. This decision also refers to the interesting statements and facts that they had revealed in this officially first livestream. I will give you a short summary about this topic now again for those who not heard of this. They said the brave shield on War Raymond was additional added to the character design. Originally War Raymond's character design was blended without the brave shield because they had already planned to make transformable Digimon toy figures to the anime in order to be able to compete with other companies that offered transformable figures at that time. Though they needed something that represented the two halves of Agumon's head on the toy and they designed and added the Brave Shield to Walk Raymond's original character design just for the reason of to make it easier to turn that character into a transformable toy figure later. To have something to give the toy figure a more accurate look which corresponds to the character design of War Cremon in the anime due to the unavoidable splitted head halves of Agumon's form on War Cremon's back on the toy figure. So to not have two such big kibble parts of Agumon on War Cremon's back. Since I had taken this information from the With the Will forum page, I also said in my update video about this presentation live stream which posted another member about this topic which was also referred to during this live stream. This member guessed so with this it was officially confirmed that what many people already speculated over the years 
namely that the Wargreymon and Metal Garurumon original character designs were designed specifically to make it easier to be able to turn later those two anime characters into transformable toy figures. Yeah, but as critical collectors for those these new transformable figures according to Bandai Tamashi's own statements are actually produced, for those the best possible perfection stands in the main focus, for them they not stay true to their official statements in this point. Because the critical collector isn't interested in such sta statements what was back then and the reasons why it was chosen the simple way with the wing shield and Agumon's head halves again, little if anything. It is indeed very interesting to know the reason to better understand this decision. But that does not really interest me as a collector, neither what was back then, that it was made again that way, nor that they are proud of having made it that way again. This point is for me as a collector for who, as I said, the best possible perfection of the figure is in the main focus, actually absolutely not relevant. You can accept the reason for the decision better, understand it, but if you can be satisfied with this decision, that's another story. For me personally, there is simply missing as mentioned such an additional cover or extra swappable option port that would have been all possible and with that in package they would have stayed true to their official statement. I mean it is after all a Tamashi figure and the figure arts figures came with many interchangeable option ports. Why this was not disconsidered and adapted for the series of figures too, I don't know. Honestly that was also my expectations that I had from the beginning on that I not would go the simple way with the wing shield again on this new figure like it was on the old one. That's what I also said and hoped from the beginning on in my update videos. It is also okay if they wanted it that way again, but for those who do not share this opinion with them, then for these critical collectors the additional option ports are missing. Point finished. And for this I giving them a big point deduction, nostalgic memories on the part of Bandai back or forth. Because it would also have been very easy. The wing shield halves anyway coming apart very quickly out of their sockets by moving them during the transformation for example. Yes, and then for example you had could attach the additional and accurate option brave shield half parts there and done. So there would be even an upgrade kit possible on the part of Bandai, Tamashi, but well, I know that I'm dreaming. Which in turn is very positive, is that Warcraymon is awesomely poseable and very well articulated because he has an incredible number of joints for a transformable figure and in terms of this it is in no way inferior to such a real Tamashi SH figure or figure. So this Warcraymon can do a bunch of number of cool fighting poses. Here again contributes to the super strength of all joints because of the strength he retains the set poses perfectly and for being a transformable figure this fact is really great. Also there they have made an extreme improvement compared to the old digivolving figures which all have incredibly very very loose joints. And that did not just come over the years but for most of them it was like that from the beginning on and with the old figures it was an absolutely horror because of course so they have become even looser over the years. Which brings the new figures in general a very big plus point. And he can even retain many poses compared to the D-Art Dort, Warcraymon and D-Art Warcraymon original designers edition figures. Because in contrast those are have unfortunately entered incredibly loose joints. In addition, the diecast ball pack of the angle is even framed in an extra socket in the leg, which with this system is the highest quality you can get. Therefore, it will lasting for a very, very long time. 
A few more precise words about the joint structure of Warcraymon's form. The head is probably sitting on a ball pack so that movements in all directions are possible, which are of course getting limited by the hair and the armor around, and the neck is also extra again, slightly forwards and backwards moveable, probably on such a ball pack too. Kenji Watanabe himself has emphasized the unbelievable good articulation of the head and neck in his personal comment on the promotion page as particularly impressive. Now you can only agree with the good man, because it is undoubtedly for a transformable figure just world class. And also very very impressive if you compare it with the old one who actually has kinda no neck and the head is connected stiff to the body. In any case, I suspecting this very strongly because it seems to me that the head has no articulation on the old Warcraymon. In addition, you can turn the side horns back and forth, though this is more intended for the transformation, but it works if you need it. He has ball jointed shoulders, the actual shoulders are extra hinged, so really Every imaginable movements forwards to the sides and down and up are possible with the arms. To the back, the range of movements are of course a bit limited due to the wing shield, but is in general and for being a transformable figure absolutely hammer. And those are also the same joints as for Agumon's form's shoulders. The shoulder armor parts again on a small extra ball pack on that hinge joint so that you can fold up the shoulder armor parts for outward movements of the arms. Similar to the D-Arts and Figure Arts Warcraymon figures, but that is the same way with the transformable figure here is just great. The arms are rotatable at the biceps, the elbow joints are again rotatable and of course bendable and are again the same joints as for Agumon's form. The fists are attached to the Dramon Killers, but the fists are on a ball pack, so even the fists with the Dramon Killers are again extra independent, rotate-able and move-able around the forearms. The wings are also on a ball and hinge joint, so that they are also a bit articulated, but these are also the transformation joints in order to form the wing shield from the two head halves of Agumon's form. Those are on the slider to bring the head halves on the slider in the perfect accurate position for Warcraymon's form. Well the new figure really gets a fat blast in comparison to the old one from me again. Because of the slider you can bring the head halves more outwards to achieve a more accurate position for the wing shield, which is very great. Again, a significantly improvement on the new one you can see here in compare to the old. Because on the old one the head half simply folded backwards and then they hanging down there very loose on a connection part and can swing to the right and left. Actually a similar construction as here on the small action feature walk Raymond figure. It also had such a same wing shield construction but you use this part to activate the action feature by swinging it to the left and right, then he stretched out the right or left hand. But enough, this just should serve as an example. The same applies to the side shields on his belt in order to be able to perfectly adapt these parts for both evil forms which are also attached to such a ball pack. The front shield is also moveable forwards and backwards through the transformation joint, the legs are on this metal ball joint which also allows movements of the legs in all directions to the front, back and sides. The legs are extra rotatable at a thigh swivel. The knees are hinged therefore able to bend backwards and also slightly forwards and at this joint the legs are again extra rotatable on that knee swivel. The feet are, as I said, on the diecast ball pack, so they are rotatable forwards and backwards, and to the sides tilt able, and if you need it, again tilt able on that transformation flip joint. 
The claws are all individually rotatable, but this is really only intended for the transformation. The conclusion about the kibble in both forms. In Agumon's form, the figure looks much better than his alter ego, in my opinion, and got obviously improved. And as with the old Agumon, the whole lower middle part was Warcraymon's crutch front shield at the same time. Sadly, you have to admit that they managed it on the old figure once better to hide and dis distribute the Agumon kibble in Warcraymon's form better with the better use of the old transformation system, even though it does not look perfect with the two long side shields and the two for forward sticking out front shield through Agumon's folded back parts underneath. But the all around view is much cleaner than it is on the new one. This you have to respect. On the new, the huge backpack is really a problem for the overall image, which is caused by the new transformation system. Not to forget by this is the additional accurately looking lower rear part for Agumon's form, which causes an additional big Agumon kibble part for the backpack. On the new War Raymon, the old one not had to compress, as I briefly explained earlier. This additional part was at the same time on the old Agumon figure a lower back part, which is actually Warcraymon's complete front crutch shield part, and so it was otherwise a kibble part for Agumon's form. That's why you have one part more for Agumon's form on the new, which contributes to the immense backpack, but at the same time to an accurate back view of Agumon's form. However, the design decision and this compromise must be respected and for that the front view of Warcraymon is at least very clean and accurate but everything moves to the back instead. As mentioned earlier the swivels on the folding hinge joints on the Agumon's parts are missing. That would have helped to compress the parts for the unavoidable backpack much better and that they are not considered to add them is just very weak because then the backpack would not have been so far sticking out backwards. On the other hand, the new figure has been absolutely super and very impressive implemented in comparison to the old one. Everything got been improved on it by far and it, it is similar to a Transformers masterpiece figure and is quite comparable to such one minus those mentioned weak points. Now a few final words about the box. As we have seen in advance and how it been announced, the boxes of the Choshinka Tamashi series or Digivolving Spirit series are all blind boxes and all have an individual cover in the form of illustrations of their respective characters from the Digimon designer Kenji Watanabe himself. And this design was and will be retained for the other boxes. In the case of Agumon Warcraymon's box, of course you can see the illustrations from Watanabe of Agumon and Warcraymon, where Warcraymon's brave sheet reflects the shape of Agumon's head halves. The box is matte yellow, only the illustration of Agumon and Warcraymon are printed shiny. I hope you can see this here. Otherwise, you have on the left front here the Diecast Evolution logo, also shiny and silver highlighted. Then you have the designation for the title of the figure in white on grey background, Digivolving Spirits, including something bigger in Japanese, the Japanese name, Joshinka Tamashi, and Digimon Adventure Agumon Warcraymon 01 for the first release of this figure series. Beneath it, very small Japanese writings, Bandai 2017 made in China, right next to it illustrated by Kenshi Watanabe and on the right bottom corner the logo of Digimon Adventure and below that the Bandai and Tamashi Nations logos. The lid is as you can see only matte yellow and in the middle white glossy printed again in a similar Form the same designation Digivolving Spirits, Choshinga Tamashi, 
Digimon Adventure 01 Agumon Walkwaymon. And to the left and right of it, bright yellow to beige glossy printed the silhouettes of the figures of Agumon and Walkwaymon, reminiscent of the very first promotion images if you remember. The left side, as you can see, decorates the rest of Walkwaymon's illustration from the cover, a product image of Agumon's form, and above it, the glossy designation Digivolving Spirits Choshinga Tamashi Digimon Adventure 01 Agumon Walkraymon. Here are very nicely in addition the 8 crest symbols of Adventure 01 printed around the title. On the right side we have a product image of Walkraymon's form below the same white shiny designations without the crest symbols this time. The matte back decorates the great promotion image from the promotion page with all sorts of texts and explanations in Japanese, which I cannot read. The diecast parts and the chrome bladed plates are advised. Top left again the designation, this time in glossy yellow printed Digimon Adventure 01 Agumon Walkraymon, right in matte again. Digivolving Spirit, Choshinga Tamashi, and below the Diecast Evolution logo got printed again. To the left of Walkraymon and part from the promotion text in Japanese and even in English, which explain briefly what Digivolving Spirits or Choshinga Tamashi series is. Below left a few English warnings and right across the advertising image, even glossy for the next upcoming figure release. Next lineup 02 Digimon Adventure Gabumon Metal Garurumon with the corresponding great promotion image for him. On the bottom, the warnings and stuff again in Japanese. The printed Toei seal and right again in yellow shiny that designation. The more interesting is something hidden on the lid flap. I had the following translated by a good female WhatsApp friend who actually knows Japanese very well. Well, at this point I want to do a big thanks shout out to her. Simply there is written Agumon Wapshika! Wapshikaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
For me, those are Tamashi figure arts figures with a wonderful, sharp edged and well proportioned design that can transform. That are well articulated as the figure arts figures and that's just more than groundbreaking and breathtaking. Another feature of that walk Raymond shares with the figure arts is that you do not see any screws or screw holes and that should now be seen as a comparison to the old which were intended to be for children. Tamashi called the development between old and new themselves a true diggy evolution in the parts because of the sharp edged shapes as it is on the figure arts and with that they are definitely right. That's why the price for the new Agumon Walkraymon which was considered to be uh, too high for some of people is more than justified I think because it is a product for the collector section and those are never cheap and those who had previously expected a lower price for the new ones as they offered for the old digivolving figures back then were just incredibly unrealistic and in my opinion and in this respect absolutely beyond help. You should also consider the small possibility of being able to implement these characters as transformable figures at all. I think I have presented a fair judgment about the first release here which may help offers to see the figure and other upcoming figures of the series in their possible implementation now in a different light and I hope a bit of having convinced some of you of our critics. So I think I said everything important what was to be said about Choshinka Tamashi Series 01 Agumon Walkraymon or Digivolving Spirit Series 01 Agumon Walkraymon. For sure it was enough I think. So many thanks to all for who stayed with me until now and I'm looking forward to present you in the next video the second release of this figure series which of course I will dedicate to Choshinka Tamashi Series 02 Gabumon Metal Garurumon or Digivolving Spirit Series 02 Gabumon Metal Garurumon. About a thumbs up I would be very happy and you can subscribe to my channel as well, of course, if you liked the video. So bye and see you in next review video, your Mega88-1000. Don't be afraid.